Okay. So we'll go for the synthesis of sentences. Sentences. So when we are talking about synthesis of sentences, so we do understand that the meaning of synthesis is called as a... Sir, you are muted. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Okay. So when we are talking about synthesis of sentences, right? So what do you mean by synthesis of sentences? It means called as a combination of two or more simple sentences into a single simple sentence. Like synthesis is the opposite of analysis and means the combination of a number of simple sentences into one new sentence. So as far as you know, there are means, uh, three types of sentences. One is called as a simple, simple, compound, Compound and third is called as a complex. Simple compound and complex, right? So we do understand that uh, means, uh, to whom you call as a simple sentence. So you can consider that a simple sentence can be referred as a means uh, independent sentence, right? Let's say that if I'm talking about simple sentence, then you can point out he jumped up. He jumped, he jumped up, right? This can be called as a one of the simple sentence, right? If I talk about compound sentence, so then what do we say that? We can point out, he jumped up, he jumped up. Then after you can also say that he ran away. He ran away. Right. Or you can say that he jumped up and he ran away. Right. Look into it. So what do you find out? Now you here you would find out a compound sentence. Right. So similar to that, if I talk about complex sentence, so complex sentence can be referred as a what? The complex sentence can be referred as a what? Now, he requested me, he requested me, requested me that that uh, or you can say that he requested me that uh, not to not to tell his mother tell his mother about his bunking or about his uh, bunking the class, right? That, that can be called as a kind of a complex sentence or you can point out that he told me that means uh, the hearse was not in a good condition and the, the uh, it, it died in the last night right or it died the uh, the night before right that can be called as a kind of a complex sentence so when you are talking about this means a synthesis of sentence so first you need to understand what is that simple compound complex so we can find out simple simple sentence is called as a subject and verb compound sentence is called as a subject and verb two subjects or two verbs which have been joined with the and conjunction complex sentence can be called as a one of the means uh, main clause and another one is called as a subordinate clause right one is called as a main clause sir, and the other one is called as a subordinate clause yes sir, can you be writing can you write in copy yeah you can write no issue right so in that case, we can talk about these are called as a simple compound or complex, right? But when we are talking about the synthesis of sentence, so what we are trying to do now, we are trying to do uh, 
that how we can make compound sentence into simple sentence, complex sentence into simple sentence, following some of the means cheap ways. Following some of the cheap ways. Let's say that if I am talking about this, following some of the cheap ways means let's say that the, the first one is called as a using the method of participle. By using what? Using the method of participle, right? By using a participle. So now you must know that what is that participle is all about. Now the meaning of participle can be referred as a means. Uh, uh, you can say participle can be referred as a present participle. Present participle, right? Or you can talk about past participle, present participle, or you can say that past participle. If I am talking about the present participle, it means can I am. Camera has switched off. My. Then your camera is not visible. My camera is. Yes, not... My camera is not visible. No, sir. Others, can you see my picture? No, sir. How come? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, it is means really helpful to read in board. Okay. So present participle is called as a verb plus ing. Verb plus ing. It means present. This is called as a present participle. So participle is called as a means uh, present participle there are two types of participle one is called as a present participle and the other one is called as a past participle so present participle is referred as a verb plus ing form right like writing watching uh, meeting right so those are called as a, or jumping present participle is equal to present continuous yes Sorry. present participle is equal to uh, means uh, you can say that uh, yes, present continuous. continuous right past participle is equivalent to what past continuous past continuous past. Right. Past. yeah so you, or you can talk about means uh, bar plus ed or en form bar plus ed or en form look into it bar plus ed or en we also call it Bar plus ing, bar plus ed or en form. Like we usually say, no? The past participle is verb plus ed or en. Yeah. Simple present. We, we usually say, no? Simple present. Simple past. Simple past. We also say that present participle. Present participle. We also say that past participle past participle how do we say that how do we say that when we say walk or uh, let's say go simple past is went present participle is going and past participle is gone is not it this is what similar to that yes sir walk Simple past is walked. Our present participle is working. And past participle is walked. Is not it? So that is why it is called as a past participle, verb plus ed or in present participle, verb plus ing form. Right. Now, if you talk about present participle or past participle, then so we have a only difference is called as ing and ed or en form. Now, uh, I was just telling about this uh, by using a participle. So how we can use the uh, means a participle form and can make or combine two or more simple sentences into one simple sentence. Let's say that the first example you can say, he jumped up, he jumped, he jumped up, right? So then after you say, he ran away he ran away now you find out two sentences are given and we need to do what now we need to 
combine them into one particular sentence. So what we supposed to do? We need to use participle. How do we use participle? Now here it is given jumped. Here it is given ran. So participle means referring to the verb because these are pronoun. No, he and he away and up. They are not. Means they are called as a particles. But and here he he is called as a subject. Only verb here you find out jumped because what can be formed as a participle. Now, the verb can be formed as a participle. Here, the verb is formed as a present participle, past participle. So, if we use a, use a participle, then we can say jumped as a jumping. Uh, if we use the participle, jumping up. So, you can say that jumping up, comma, he ran away. He ran away. So what you have done, now you have just taken the first verb and said that jumping up, he ran away. So jumping up, he ran away, right? Now, this is something called as a, means using a participle. Similar to that, if I give you more example, or if we go for the more example, If we use more examples, so you can find out the idea is called as what? Now, then uh, another one can be called as a, you can see, uh, he was tired of play, he sat down to rest, right? Sir, we will write jumping up. up. Uh, yeah, jumping up. Jumping up, he ran away. So what you have done? Now you have found the sentence one and you have found the sentence two, right? Now both of the sentence has been merged into one sentence. Is not it? Jumping up, he ran away. It is a one sentence. But, and how this one sentence turned out? Now this one sentence turned out because of the means of, uh, when you are combining the two of the sentences. Wait a minute. Now, next is called as a, another one or another example. You can find out he was he was tired of he was tired of what? Now he was tired of play. He was tired of play, and another one you find out he sat down to rest. He sat down. He sat down to rest. Now, you, what do you find out? Again, you would find out the two, the two of the sentences. Yeah. Is not it? Yeah. So the first one is called as yeah. tired of play, and the second one is called as a sat down to rest. This is called as a sentence one, and this is called as a sentence two. Right. Now, once you merge this, uh, merge, merge these two sentences, how you can make it? Now, look into it. This one is called as a simple past, jumped up. But this one is called as a was tired. And this one is called as a sat down to rest. Now, in that case, what, uh, what you are supposed to do so that it will, it will be considered as the appropriate synthesis. Now, look into it. So this is the subject and the first verb is called as a watch. Here, this is the subject and this one is called as a first verb. So here, jump is turning into jumping. Now, watch will be turning into what? Watch will be turning into what? Now, if you see that, we have a B verb, right? So B verb, that's called as a B, bin, bin, Bing. Each arm are watch and when, right? These are called as a means uh, uh, form. And you would find out each arm are watch where being being coming out from the root one. So the root one is called as a beaver. So in that case, if they can be turned into participle, they can be turned into ing form being. So in that case, watch will be turning as a what? Now being, 
being so what is turning into being tired of being tired of play he he sat down he sat down to rest he sat down to rest am i clear how it is happened right so you can write being tired of play right he sat down to rest right or you can write simply if you don't want to use this then you can move to the next one tired so you can write tired of play tired of play he sat down he sat down to rest is not it tired of play he sat down to rest now what you have done now merging this one uh, two sentence into one or called as a this one am i clear are you getting the point yes sir yes sir okay now uh, we can also take another example so uh, this two this two are indicating about what by using a participle now moving to the next one please do remember how it is done and uh, you have to do it in the same manner i'll give you the exercise also now this is called as a way of using one of the way uh, of using means uh, synthesize of sentence right that is called as a using participle form right the next one is called as a, we also you follow the another method that's called as a uh, using a noun or phrase in opposition using what using a noun or using a noun or opposition now what do you mean by that opposition using an using a noun or a position what do you mean of that so when you are talking uh, when you are talking about noun or a position or a phrase in a position right so we can see that uh, let's say sai comma uh, the boy sai the boy the boy uh, has taken has taken leave leave for his brother for his brother comma sanjay's sanjay's marriage right now if you see that here the noun is what sai here the noun is what uh, noun phrase is what the boy here you would find out his brother so and <clears throat> it is called as a noun right so it means you would find out both are representing noun but both are uh, referring to the one person or one boy similar to that whoever his brother he is, he is a sanjay so in that case you will find out here his brother and sanjay both are referring to one so that is why they can be called as a opposition what they call and they call opposition right opposition means two of the nouns referring to one person right let's say that how we use the noun opposition let's say the first one the first one is uh, like uh, the example is given this is my friend or this is my student this is my student right his name is his name is sai right now what do you find out here here you find out two of the sentences sentence 1 and his name is sai sentence 2 now two sentences are there now what we supposed to do now we will combine them synthesize into one how now simply by using a noun or a position 
So I can say this each my student. This is my student side. So simple. This is my uh, student side, right? That's what I can say, right? Or I can simply write, this is my student side, right? So what you have done? You have done nothing but pointing the position. So you have simply merged this two into simple sentence, forming into one sentence, right? This is one of the example. Now, even you can also say that another example, the another example is called as a, see this, I spent, I spent two days, I spent two days, where? Now, in Kolkata, or, yeah, in Kolkata, Kolkata, right, so, uh, that can be, right, and uh, I spent two days in Kolkata, one of the most now see that one of the most most attractive attractive and joyous attractive and joyous uh, place one of the most attractive and joyous place in India. In India. Right. This is what you can point out uh, as a what? Now, this is what uh, you can point out as a one of the uh, men's uh, question. So, where it is stated, I spent two days in Kolkata. This is called as a first sentence, sentence one. And this is called as a one of the most attractive and joyous place in India. Right. This is called as a sentence two, right? Now, what I supposed to do? I need to join both, right? What I supposed to do? I need to join both into one. How I can do it? Now, I can see that, uh, say that I spent two days in Kolkata, right? So, or called as a, uh, I spent two days in, uh, in Kolkata, one of the most attractive place in India. Right, one of the most attractive and joyous. Right, see, I have already formed it. I have already formed it. I spent two days in Kolkata, one of the most attractive and joyous uh, place in India. Right, so if I want to make it two sentences, it is, it is, sorry, it is one of the most attractive and joyous place in India. So instead of means uh, placing it, I have simply written the answer, right? So I spent two days in Kolkata, one of the most attractive and joyous place in India. So this can form as a very, you know, compound sentence into complex sentence. How you have done it? Now you have pointed now Kolkata, one of the most attractive and joyous place in India, simple. So that is called as a using noun or phrase in a position. You can make, uh, combine two of the sentences into one. Right. I think uh, somebody is trying to join. Uh, okay. No issue. Am I clear so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is called as a use a uses of means a noun or noun phrases. Now let's move to the next. Uh, Another example, right? Now, coming to the uh, another example, which is uh, pointed here, uh, you can say this town was once a prosperous seaport. See that? Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir Smithiman is telling to admit him. How can I admit at the end of the class? It's going to be end, no? 7.50. So... Sir, but he is asking. So what we will do? Uh, but he is not here. Okay, leave it. Uh, now he is trying. 
Now, look into it. This town, this town was uh, the example. This town was once a once a more prosperous, prosperous more uh, 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 this uh, this town was once a prosperous seaport, right? Once a prosperous Sir? seaport. See, I'm, uh, I'm uh, taking the class. Now, uh, whatever you want to do, just see it, right? Seaport. So, which chapter you are studying? You are teaching us? Synthesize of sentences. Okay, right. sir. Uh, so, th this town was once a prosperous seaport. Right? This is the first sentence. Now, sentence one. Right. The second sentence is what? It is now. It is now. It is now a heap of ruins. A heap of ruins. Now you find out this town was once a prosperous seaport. Sentence one. Second sentence. It is now a heap of ruins. This is sentence two. Now. What we are supposed to do? Thus, we will combine this sentence into one. How can we do it? Na means uh, simply by using a noun or a phrase in a position. So I can point out this town. This town, comma this town, right? Second is what? Once a prosperous seaport. Now, which one is considering as a once a prosperous seaport? Now, the town. Once a prosperous, prosperous seaport, seaport is now, is now, is now. A heap of heap of ruins. Now, did you find out it's uh, it has been changed into one particular sentence? What is that? This town was once a prosperous seaport. It is now so it is now a heap of ruins. So what you have done? You have simply pointed means uh, this town once a prosperous seaport is now a heap of ruins. So joining both sentences into one particular simple sentence. Am I clear so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So can we move for the next one? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. What we will do in the third part, the third part we will use with the preposition. So we will use the preposition We will use the preposition and we will combine the sentence. Okay. Give me a second. I need to connect my Mac. Yep. So the next one is called as a what? By using a preposition, by using a preposition, by using a preposition, or you can say that uh, uh, preposition with a noun or general. So preposition is used with whom? Noun. Or gerund, right? So uh, obviously, gerund is again called as a verb with ing form, right? So preposition using a preposition with a noun or gerund. What's right? the meaning of gerund? Gerund is called as a verb with ing, like which is forming or working as a means a noun in the sentence that may be used as the subject of the sentence or may be called as a uh, object of the sentence. Let's say that if I say uh, 
सृष्टिमान लाइक्स फिशिंग सृष्टिमान लाइक्स फिशिंग नाउ सृष्टिमान इज द सब्जेक्ट राइट नाउ व्हाट सृष्टिमान डच नाउ सृष्टिमान लाइक्स व्हाट सृष्टिमान लाइक्स नाउ सृष्टिमान लाइक्स फिशिंग सो द वर्ड फिशिंग फिशिंग इज अ जेरोन राइट so it is working as the object of the sentence so similar to that fishing is a uh, one of the hobby fishing is a one of the hobby right among the students right so fishing is used as a subject of the sentence right so this gerund is working as a noun as a subject of the sentence or maybe object of the sentence right now Coming to the next one, that's called as a by using a preposition noun or gerund. Right? How? Let me go for the example. The first example is called as a, the moon rose. The moon rose. The moon rose. It is a one of the sentence. Their journey was not ended. The moon rose. Their journey was not ended. Right now, you find out sentence one and you find out sentence two. Two of the sentences have been pointed. So, uh, in that case, what we supposed to do? Now, we supposed to join, combine these two sentences using with the preposition. What we supposed to do? Now, first we use participle. Second, we use noun or uh, phrase in a position. Third, we are going to use preposition with a noun or gerund. So, how we can do it? Now, we can say that the moon rose, right? So, the moon rose. Now, we need to think about something was not ended, right? So, or we can say that the end of their before the end of their journey. So what we can do? The moon rose dash Now what do we use? The moon rose the journey was not ended so obviously we need to say that uh, <clears throat> first happened is called as moon so that said the moon rose before the end of their journey right so before the end of their journey so that can be called possibly considering as a one sentence the moon rose before the end of their journey so it can be called as a sentence one and it is a simple sentence right because here you will find out the verb which only rose right so this one is the subject this one is the verb and this one is called as a means uh, prepositional phrase or object of the sentence the moon rose before the end of their journey now similar to that if you look into the next sentence the next sentence is called as a, he has felt many times he has felt many times he has felt many times so he still hopes to succeed he still hopes to succeed he still hopes to succeed so this again referred as a two sentence sentence one sentence two right now what we supposed to do now we need to use preposition so that we will make a simple sentence so how do we use it now we can say that means he has felt felt many times he still hopes to succeed so you can say that this in spite of many failures he hopes to succeed in spite of so felt will be uh, taken as a verb will be changed into the form of uh, noun like you can say in spite of many failures in spite of many failures so he hoped hopes to succeed right or not or called as a, although means uh, uh, 
again i mean if i am using also although or if i am using also yet yes i can use despite but although and though and yet they can be called as a conjunction so i need to use the preposition so for preposition i can use it despite or in spite of right so it would be better if i am using a positive form positive word because in spite of creates a kind of a positive usage right so in spite of many failures in spite of in spite of many failures comma he still he still hopes to succeed he still hopes to succeed so always keep the first one as the means uh, change if you cannot find out the change in the first sentence then you can go for the second sentence like here you would find out the moon rose the journey was not ended so we find out uh, uh, it's a little difficult to change in the first one so that's why what we did we changed in the second part the moon rose before the end of the journey he has failed many times he still hopes to succeed in spite of many failures he still hopes to succeed this would be called as a means uh, one of the example right even we can also say that now so i think yeah it's a e2 okay this would be the last example so after that you will get the uh, means a certain uh, task and that you will take it as a home task right so now let me take you to the next two example uh, next to wage sorry no not the next example next you wage so and in that next wage we will understand not only we use with the participles not only we use with the um, <clears throat> noun or uh, noun or phrase opposition so not only we use with the prepositions we can also use with the other one that's called as using the nominative form nominative so using uh the nominative or absolutive uh, absolute uh, what do we call it absolute construction right using the absolute absolute using uh using nominative okay let me point out using nominative or the absolute construction absolute construction okay i think it's a uh, 8 o'clock uh, i need to go for the next class also so we'll do one thing we will uh, proceed for the next class this uh, last one using the nominative section right and also we will go for the using infinitive we will also discuss about uh, how adverb or an adverbial phrases can be used for making or constructing sentences combining or synthesizing the sentences right we will discuss the rest of the things in the next class till then bye bye huh? thank you sir bye sir thank you sir bye sir